So a little bit uh, about uh, today's speaker, uh, uh, Usha Rangaraju is a well-known uh, data scientist uh, and a researcher. Uh, she works currently uh, as uh, a chief of research in EXA protocol, where they are researching into the inter uh, uh, into the areas of both cybersecurity and AI. Apart from that, Usha is well known in the community space. She regularly gives talks at different events, uh, whether it's in-person event or online events. And uh, typically she talks about uh, probabilistic graphical models, deep learning, machine learning, and uh, anything related to data science. Uh, so apart from her interest and expertise in data science, she wears many other hats. Uh, she is a polymath. She is also the founder of Neuro AI. She is an autism advocate and uh, she is a community member of NUM Focus. Uh, so, uh, some of you may know that NUM Focus is an important uh, organization. They sponsor a number of projects uh, which are uh, scientific projects. For example, Pandas, uh, Sci Fi, NumPy, uh, OK. So, so many Python packages uh, are based, uh, I mean, are sponsored by NUM Focus. So, Usha is a community member of NUM Focus as well. Uh, so with that short introduction, I will hand over to Usha uh, to deliver the main talk. Yeah, thank you so much, Arvind, for inviting me to uh, speak on this very important occasion. And uh, I'm, uh, it's my privilege to uh, speak for the Devo Media Meetup on the okay, I mean, for the Engineering Day, Engineers Day celebrations. Thank you so much for that, and thank you so much for the introduction as well. And uh, today we are going to see a very interesting topic in computer vision, which is going to be vision transformers. So transformers, a brief introduction is transformers have been predominantly used in NLP. So it started with uh, NLP, but it's domain agnostic in the sense it's being used in vision now. I'll show you it's been I've implemented some research papers for tabular data, but I've not made it public as such. Um, so you have uh, tab transformers. It's my Kaggle account, so I'll just show you. So it is not just uh, this. See, you have uh, transformers can be used for this is a tab transformer notebook. It can be used for tabular data also. This is a uh, tabular data playground series which happens every month in Kaggle. So it, uh, transformers can be used for tabular data. Tabular data is data in rows and columns where you can use transformers. It's not just NLP. It started with NLP. It was a revolutionary moment for NLP when Transformers paper released. And uh, there were a lot of people toying with that concept of attention, self-attention and all was there before the paper. But this paper was a landmark paper and uh, which, um, you know, which triggered many other architectures to come like BERT. And after BERT released, Roberta, Alberta, there are many other variants of BERT which got released. Right now we are in a very good space in the NLP where we can solve most of the complex problems using these uh, state-of-the-art architectures itself. Then uh, with the success of BERT, a lot of people were thinking like if it's so successful in uh, NLP, then why can't we apply the same architecture in vision? So this is some kind of an experiment which a group of researchers tried out and uh, they were quite successful. So CNNs has got uh, various disadvantages which VIT overcomes. We're going to look into that shortly. And uh, this is the context of how uh, vision transformers came into being. So this is a medium article which summarizes the important points in the research paper. So the session is like we look into the main important points of the research paper. You can also read the research paper, but the research paper might be like pretty long, like 22 uh, pages. So you can have a look. It comes from Google Research Brain Tree. And uh, you can have a look at the paper, but I'm going to uh, do a summary of the paper. I picked up one article, but there are plenty of resources for vision transformers. Uh, there are several articles which has done a good job in summarizing the important points of the paper. So uh, if you take vision before vision transformers, if you take there was the efficient net, 
uh, there was like a lot of other architectures like inception, you have ResNet, you had uh, CNNs, basically various forms of CNNs and all these architectures were uh, decent. Uh, they were performing good. If you see, there's not much of a difference in terms of performance between efficient net and VIT. If you take any Kaggle competitions, I think their performance is almost similar with like small, uh, but for Kaggle, even that 0 0.1, 0 0.001 matters a lot, right? So that's where the uh, VIT, uh, you know, uh, you know, wins big. Because VIT, there's a small performance gain which you which you get in most of the Kaggle competitions, but the lesson again resources is compute resources is a very important criteria. So VIT uses four times less resources than traditional CNN architectures. So that's also you know for Kaggle, I think they have only 20 hours of GPU and things like that. So the resources compute power is also a very important criteria. So if your architecture is using four times less resources, giving almost uh, little performance gain also, then that's a favorable architecture. So you will find VIT in it is not the single solo VIT which is going to be a winner, but uh, common in the winning solution, it will be a multi layered architecture and some of the architecture might have VIT in it. So this is about the context. And so most of what are the disadvantages? We'll see what uh, why is CNNs have some disadvantages and what are those disadvantages is something which we will look. So one of the uh, biggest trends of CNN is their translation variants, which means uh, you know you can change the objects into various shapes. You can do perform various augmentation techniques on an image and uh, still they are able to recognize the image because any CNN computer vision architecture you take the end to end flow of solving the use cases you will perform uh, image augmentations if your data set is very limited and if you have limited number of data images then you're going to perform image augmentation. So in image augmentation you are basically rotating the image you take a cat and you rotate the cat or you perform zoom and things like that. You perform various augmentations on it, but in spite of doing all this translation variance activities, the uh, CNN is still be able to classify a cat as a cat. So that is one of the biggest strengths of CNNs. But if you take weakness, they have quite a number of weakness, which actually VIT overcomes. So BNN has a lot of weakness. Out of that lot of weakness, there's some weaknesses which VIT overcomes. So first thing is computational power. So if you take CNN's, uh, uh, you know, VIT is four times computationally less expensive compared to uh, CNN's for most of the use cases and uh, with a performance gain. So it's computationally expensive. So in real world use cases, uh, it is very important. So uh, computational, see for a lot of use cases, even in EXA, it's a mobile application. So we require uh, you know, mobile GPUs or whatever mobile applications may not have that kind of a higher end GPU and stuff like that. So we want a model which is computationally exp uh, you know, less expensive. And uh, there are a lot of use cases like that where, you know, the computational power might be a criteria for the end, you know, when the uh, model is deployed. So this might be a criteria for a lot of use cases. So that way VIT plays back here, play, wins back. And uh, if you take the understanding of images, there is something called local understanding of the features where you understand about uh, how the different features within an image interacts with each other. And there's also a global understanding of the images, general, uh, you know, meta uh, information about the images kind of things. But CNNs will not have that kind of a global understanding. They are very good with the local understanding of the features. So that VIT is uh, able to defeat CNN in that aspect because VIT is good in understanding, having both kinds of understanding, both global and the local understanding. And uh, CNN is again very uh, domain specific, whereas VIT is domain agnostic. In the sense you can take multiple domains within a particular uh, use case could be retail or different domains that context also or you can take domains in the context of type of data. 
where BIT, I think, is very good. I mean, transformers in general are very good with either it is NLP use case or it is vision or it is tabular data. They're very good in terms of type of data as well. And it is also agnostic in terms of uh, the nature of use case domain as well. So these are uh, some and CNNs are specifically designed for images. So CNNs are not that successful in tabular data or they aren't that successful with NLP either. But transformers are successful in NLP vision and in tabular data. So these are some of the weaknesses of CNN where BIT wins big. So with this context, let's dive into the important points of the research paper. So if you take this is the architectural Sorry, diagram. Please. This is the architectural diagram of vision transformers. And so it requires the basic we have having transformer encoder architecture. So it requires a basic understanding of transformers. So is everyone in the class here understands what transformer architecture is? Or do you want me to go through five minutes of transformers quickly or are you already familiar with transformers? A yeah, five minute yeah, intro, nice. intro will be good. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So and one one thing I have to discuss means a CNN, LR CNN, VIT means most probably which one will be used for the NLP. Why? Because I am working as a data specialist. I, I, I am using I3D models and LR CNN models. For training the data and uh, further net detection, all the stuff means I am for dealing NLP, with the sports and that. For NLP, yeah. uh, vision transformers is only for computer vision, but uh, okay, okay. Uh, for NLP, you should use BERT based variant. You can use based on the use case, you can use BERT or Alberta, Roberta, or Distilly BERT. Deberta is doing most of the Kaggle use cases. Deberta is becoming the winner these days to Deberta. And there are many word based variants which has come out that I think should be uh, the go to architectures for NLP use cases. Uh, vision transformer is specifically for vision. Transformer based architecture is used in all domains, but they have different names in different domains. For vision transform, vision, it is vision transformer. For NLP, you have different, different names. And for uh, tablet data, there is something called tab transformer, gated tab transformer, feature transformer. These are the transformer based variants in for tablet data. So for different data type, you've got different transformer based variants. And uh, so if it's NLP, then I would recommend trying out based on the use case. You should pick up some architecture. If you are doing machine translation, if you're doing multilingual machine translation, then Excel, Roberta. So based on the use case, you can pick up some bird based variant. Yeah, thank you. OK, so now let's uh, look for five minutes of uh, I've shared all the materials in a document the ones which I'm going to use in the class, which I'll just share it in the chat window. You can put chat it in the Q and a, Q and a. Yeah, you can put it there. Yeah. Everyone can see that. Arvin, can you please share the uh, this recording after the call so that it may might be useful for us? Yeah, recording will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. OK, fine, fine. That's good. So uh, this is uh, transformer based architecture is what we are going to see now. Basic introduction to transformers. And then for five minutes, so I'm, uh, I've shared this link in the document. So this is only five minute introduction, but if you're listening to it for the first time, you may not understand all of it. So you can always visit that link and, uh, you know, uh, at your leisure time and learn it really well. And now uh, see this, there are several articles on Transformer. This is more of a visual introduction. So anything which is visual, might be easier to understand. So I picked up this 
And uh, so if you take transformers internally, they have two uh, big blocks, which is encoders and decoders. So transformers and they were introduced in NLP. They were primarily introduced for the first use case. They were used primarily for uh, this uh, machine translation. So you give an input sequence and you get an output sequence, which might be in a different language. So there's an encoder blocks and there's a decoder block. So this is the one of the biggest components and each of these components in, in turn and divided into multiple sub components. So if you take encoder, you have multiple encoders. So transformer architecture will not have a single encoder decoder block. The encoder block will contain multiple encoders and the same way decoder block will contain multiple decoders. Now we are going to take each of these component one single encoder where you're going to unbox what are the things in that one single encoder. If you take one single encoder, it will have a feed forward neural network and it will also have a self attention layer. So feed forward neural network is something which you will all be familiar with where you have an input layer, an output layer or a hidden layer where every node in that input layer is connected to every other node in the next layer. So you have a simple feed forward neural network and you also have a self attention layer. Again, why the concept of self attention and why uh, self you know, self attention attention based concepts existed even before the transformer based architecture came. You know all these concepts which are introduced in the transformer based products. This paper got lucky and it got famous, but uh, these ideas in the paper many ideas were covered in different different papers at different uh, you know uh, that during that point of time, but this paper was able to make it big. Um, but the many ideas of the paper are discussed in the previous papers as well. The concept of self attention and all that. So this is a single uh, encoder block and for a decoder block, you have one block in addition to these two blocks, which is encoder decoder attention. So now we are going to co take this concept of attention and we are going to discuss it in detail how uh, it works. So now. Uh, we have a self attention layer. We have a feed forward neural layer. Now we have if it's a machine translation and if you're translating French to English, then we have JSU Etudia, which means in English it is I'm a student. So you have three words for each of the words. We have a single block and if you see here, the attention layer is shared among the words. Uh, you know, the, the, this lates layers, although there are different layers here, the attention layer is shared between all the three words. And now, um, so instead of taking a three letter word, we can just go for a simple two letter word. So that will help you in understanding things easier. So you have uh, thinking missions. This is a two letter word. Then you have self attention layer and then you have Z layer. Then you have a feed forward neural network layer here. If you see the attention layer is shared among the words, whereas feed forward neural network is not shared among the uh, words. So this is very important. So what is attention in specific? We will be unboxing this uh, flow in a bit. Before we unbox this flow in a bit, we should also understand what is attention. So when you say the animal didn't, for example, I'm giving a sentence, the animal didn't cross the street because it was too tired. So if you take this uh, because it was too tired here, the it refers to the animal, but the word it is placed very far from the word animal. The animal is the second word and it is placed at the rear end of the sentence. So how do machines, will, how can machines understand it refers to the animal? It's through the concept of attention, self attention. The machines can actually understand that it refers to the uh, word animal. So this is a diagram which depicts the concept of uh, self attention. Here every word is mapped out to every other word. So here it will have a stronger connection with regards to the animal because actually it refers to the animal. So this is the whole concept of self attention. 
And uh, so now we are going to look at this encoder decoder block. What actually happens inside an encoder and what actually happens inside a decoder? So the single encoder block has one feed forward and self attention, but the bigger architecture will have multiple encoder blocks. The same way it will have multiple decoder blocks. We're just going to take one particular encoder block and see what uh, what happens inside the encoder block. So uh, when you uh, take the concept of self attention, you have to understand there are in the paper they propose three vectors which is called queries, keys and values. They also say how to calculate these queries, V's and values as well. So there are three vectors, queries, keys and values. And you also have uh, the embedding for thinking machine. So thinking this numerical word is con converted into an embedding vector. You can use any form of uh, embedding. You can either go for word to a glove or uh, you can go for any other uh, embedding and uh, you can choose the form of embedding which you want and you can create embedding for each of the individual words. In addition to this embedding vector, you also have uh, three things, which is three other vectors which are introduced in the paper, which is query keys and values. The whole concept of these three vectors is, plays a very important role in the transformers paper. So you have an embedding vector using any form of embedding. You can create an embedding vector, the embedding of your choice. And uh, so and then you also have these three key vectors. Now. What happens is you will be following some mathematical operations. You will do this with the embedding vector and with these three vectors, you will do certain mathematical operations to compute uh, certain other values. So what are the mathematical operations which we are going to do it is what we're going to see. So the first thing is you should multiply the query vector with the key vector. So if you multiply query vector with the key vector, that is the first operation you will do. After multiplying that query vector with key vector, you will actually divide it by the dimension of the key vector. So uh, here, uh, see uh, if you take the uh, embedding of the original word, it is uh, bigger than the dimension of the query key and value. So according to the paper, query key and value should always be less than the dimension of the word. And uh, so when you take square root of the dimension of key vector, so if the dimension is around 64, so square root of 64 might be uh, 8. So you are dividing it by 8. So if you divide 112 by 8, you will get 14. So the first step is you should multiply query vector and key vector. You will get some uh, number. That number should be divided by the square root of the dimension of key vector. So here the dimension of key vector is 64, but these are uh, hyperparameters which you can tune in your, if you are designing a custom model, these are hyperparameters which you can tune. So here the dimension of key vector is 64 and um, the square root of 64 is 8. So I'll be dividing 112 by 8, which will give me 40. So first step multiply query key vector, divide by the second step, divide by the square root of dimension of key vector and third step is going to take soft max on that entire value. So these are the three steps which I should uh, perform. So uh, yeah, so this is uh, the diagram which shows all these steps. So after that, you will be multiplying it by the value vector. After you take softmax, you will multiply it by the value vector and then you will do a sum which will give you the Z value. So this is what these are the operations which you need to uh, do for self attention. These are the operations which are which will be done for self attention. When we say self attention here, just mapping every word to every other word to find out what this it matters. What is happening behind the scenes for the computer to understand that it actually refers to animal? What are the set of operations which the uh, algorithm internally performs to deduce that it is actually referring to animal is what we are seeing. Which we are seeing the concept of self attention in detail. So we saw every word has got the embedding vector. Then you have query key and value of vectors and then you're doing a set of operations multiplying query vector with key vector then you know. Uh, dividing it by the square root of dimension of uh, key vector and then taking a softmax, multiplying value by softmax and then calculating the sum. The whole thing is actually done in the form of matrices 
and uh, not as vectors. So you will have embedding matrix, you will have query matrix, key matrix and value matrix. And then you do it with matrix. The equation is pretty much simple. So you can just represent you are taking a query matrix, multiplying it by key matrix, transpose of key divided by dimension of key vector. Then taking a softmax on the whole of it and then you are multiplying it by dot doing a dot product with value vector, which will give you the Z value. So this is what which happens, uh, you know, underground for for the process of self attention. So when you take attention, it's not just a single attention head. You will have multiple attention layers. So you will have multiple layers in uh, parallel. So all these operations, you know, they'll have the multiple layers and you'll have multiple attention heads. So. So this. Uh, this is a brief diagram of how the encoder looks like. You have the thinking machines. So for each word, you will have positional embedding and the embedding vector. It is fed into the self-attention layer. Then you will have add a normalization layer. You have feed forward neural network. There's also a residual network which is going. The whole concept of residual networks has been introduced in the ResNet paper. So this is how. So you will have multiple attention heads. So you will not have just single uh, encoders. You will have multiple attention. So one of the disadvantages of CNNs is uh, it cannot uh, RNN CNNs cannot do parallelization that very well. But uh, transformers is very very good with parallelization. If you take RNNs, they are not capable of doing parallelization. But uh, one of the biggest advantages of transformer based architecture is they're very good with parallelization and particularly VIT is very good with parallelization. And uh, so this is what is um, this is an architecture which is available. This, pay, this blog is available online, which is very, very good. If you want to learn about transformer architectures and the paper attention is all you need. So this paper is very important for you to understand because right now most of the domains are using transformer based variants. You take image segmentation that is also people started using unit or which is a transformer based variant trans unit. Most of the transformer based variants are uh, you know uh, dominating most of the uh, uh, machine learning tasks these days. So to understand that you should first get the transformer basics right. Once you understand the transformer basics right, then understanding the newer architectures is very easy. So for example, if you take vision transformers, it's only that you should understand the basics of transformers first. Vision transformers is very easy. To understand if you already know transformers really well, which in transformers you will learn it in five ten minutes. So first spend a lot of time understanding transformers paper and transformers architecture. Once that is done, you take any new transformer based variant. It's going to take very short time for you to understand the paper. And uh, so then now we are going to look. Uh, I just took five minutes for uh, introduction, introducing transformers, five to ten minutes, but. Uh, you should spend if you're new to transformer spend a lot of time understanding it first with the because we have to keep a tab on time also so i'm just like uh, you know explaining only the, explain only the important points and uh, when it comes for vision transformers this is the architecture for vision transformers the first step what we are going to do is we have an image and that image we will be breaking down into patches so here in transformer based architecture this we are not going to use uh, pixels and like in CNNs you deal with pixels, but here you can't. You're not dealing with pixels, but you're dealing with patches. The reason is because we are doing self attention operation in the uh, transformer, and for this transform attention operation is quadratic in nature, so it is of time complexity is very high. And uh, if you deal with pixel by pixel, then it's going to be indefinite amount of time. And so that is why you don't deal with pixel by pixel. Instead, you deal with a bigger size, which is uh, patches. So here in uh, Transformers, you're dealing with image patches and not pixels. And uh, that is one difference. So you uh, take if you get an image, you take that image and divide it into a certain fixed size uh, patches. So how many patches you should divide into is again a hyperparameter based on the use case. You will be fine tuning it. So for this particular example, let's imagine 
uh, you are taking or uh, dealing with an image which is 48 by 48. 48 is a high size and 48 is a good size. Then you can divide it into a patch of nine patches and uh, each patch having a 16 by 16 pixel. This is 16 as the width and 16 as the height. So uh, that is a hyperparameter based on your image use case, uh, image size for your use case. You will be varying that how you break down into number of patches and what is the size of the individual patches. These are hyperparameters which will be defined by you. So for now, for the uh, sake of simplicity, let's take a very simple example. So we take a 48 by 48 image. We can divide into a patch of nine patches and each patch is having 16 by 16. So once you've divided, the next step you will do is you will flatten the patches. So now I've taken this patch and I've flattened it. So once I've flattened it, I also want to maintain the positional embeddings of it. So if you take an image and if you have split, if you you just like you can't randomly shuffle and then put these patches here, you need to maintain the size also when you even if you flatten it, there should be a size where you know uh, given the positional embedding, you should be able to construct the original image. That's why positional embedding is very important here. And uh, you also, uh, uh, you know, uh, ensure you maintain the size, uh, you know, the placement of the patches here. And uh, so you have linearly projecting the patches. Then you also have positional embeddings and you also have the patch embeddings. You have two embeddings and then you pass this to a transformer encoder architecture. In the transformer paper before, five minutes before, I was taking you through that paper, entire paper, what a transformer encoder decoder looks like. So you're passing this to a transformer encoder decoder. And in addition, you're for VIT, you're adding two of these. One is an MLP. MLP is nothing but multi layer perceptron where you have input layer, output layer, taking every node from the input layer, mapping to the output layer. That's a multi layer perceptron. And uh, you're having a multi layer perceptron. The output of the transformer encoder, you're feeding it in because this is a classification task, image classification task. You're feeding it into an MLP head and then you're doing a classification. So, this is what is the architecture. Now, this transformer encoder decoder is nothing but this. What is happening inside a transformer encoder decoder is you have embedded patches, which is coming here and you pass it to a normalization layer, then you have a multi head attention layer, normalization MLP. But here you have a ResNet as well, residual connection, where you're skipping the gradients and making it uh, skip certain steps. And uh, so this is what this transformer encoder decoder block. So basically, transformer encoder block. So basically, if you understand the transformer, original transformer paper, vision transformers will be very easy to understand. So you're know, just flattening out the breaking, dividing into patches, flattening out the embeddings, and you are adding a positional embedding, and then feeding into a transformer encoder, and then after the output of the transformer encoder. See, you're not using decoder here, and only using encoder. So many of the architectures will not use both encoder decoders. Most of them will use either the encoder or decoder. BERT is an encoder only architecture. So if you take GPT, it's a decoder only architecture. So many of the architectures will use either one encoder or decoder. So here VIT is using encoder. And so this is the architecture. So to understand this, you should have a very strong understanding of transformers. And uh, once this is done, so and go through that transformer encoder part. So if you take the transformer encoder part, the embedded patches, which is nothing but this, use the first is given as an input then you have a normalization here the normalization is not batch normalization it's layer normalization so you have multi head attention this block is responsible for learning both the global and the local features we learned that cnns are not good understanding the global information that very well so you have multi head attention multiple attention heads here which are very good in capturing the global information as well. And then you have a residual network. If you take the input before the normalization is directly passed here. So you have a residual network as well. And uh, then you have again a normalization and multi-layer perceptron. So here multi-layer perceptron, the activation is GLU. Instead of ReLU and LU, you use GLU. So this is briefly the encode transformer encoder architecture for VIT. 
and uh, VIT again. There are different variants of VIT which has come out. GCVIT, uh, you can combine CNN and visual VIT transformers. There are so many papers which has come out in VIT. You will find at least 1000 to 2000 papers on just VIT variants. So uh, there's one variant which is explained in the blog, which is combining CNN and the uh, VIT. Here they first take an image because CNN is very good in capturing low level information. And uh, VIT does both low level and global, local and global. So here there's one of the paper where they have taken CNNs, taken an image, passed it through the CNNs to capture the low, uh, local information. And then the output of the CNNs, you pass it to a VIT to capture the high level information and then uh, the, it's just a combination of two architecture. There's so many variants which has come up. Check out the recent research papers which has come out on VIT. So this is briefly uh, we have seen the disadvantages of earlier architectures. What is the advanced stage of the VIT and uh, some of the architectural diagrams and all that. The next thing we are going to do is we are going to take a real world use case. And we are going to see whatever we learned in theory, how is it going to apply? So the real world use case which I'm going to take is a Kaggle competition use case, which is one of the Kaggle competitions last year, which is Kasawa Leaf Disease Classification. So the use case here is uh, you have five different types of so cassava is one of the national foods of uh, uh, Africa. Certain parts of Africa, it is considered as their prime food and uh, it is very important for them to uh, you know, identify diseases at an early stage. If you identify the disease at an early stage, you can crop that part of the plant before the infection spreads to the entire plant. So uh, this is a very, very important uh, use case for the African continent. So the use case here is you have to classify, given a leaf image, you have to classify which of the five uh, categories it is. Either it's a cassava bacterial blight, or it is cassava brown streak disease, or is it cassava green mortal, or it is cassava mosaic disease, or it is a healthy leaf. So it's basically an image classification, multi-class classification problem, image multi-class classification problem. So what is given us the data is you have DF records. So directly if you're applying TensorFlow framework, then it's very easy. Or you have test images and you also have train images. And you have trained TF records as well. Then you have something called train CSV file. The reason train CSV file is some contains metadata about each and every leaf. So you have additional information about the leaf as well. Then since a capital competition, you have the format in which you should submit to the competition. So this is briefly uh, based on the what the problem context is. This is an image multi-class classification problem where you're classifying into one of the five diseases and uh, you are given uh, image in various formats. If you want to use a TensorFlow pipeline, you can go for TF records or you can go for the other uh, pipelines as well. You have JPG files directly you can use as well. So here we are going to use a pre-trained model of the uh, cassava for the cassava leaf disease classification. So these are the available configurations in VIT. You have VIT large 32, VIT large 32. It is uh, given, it is each of this model is pre-trained on a certain data set. The data set on which it is pre-trained is given and the accuracy and the time and all that is given. You can choose any of one of the model. So here you are actually importing all the uh, necessary libraries, TensorFlow, NumPy, Pandas, SKLearn, what are the libraries which you require, you are importing it. And then you have an image size here that the image size is 24. Again, this bad size, image size and all these are pa parameters which you will be configuring. So the image size for this use case is 224. Bad size you can uh, you can just do in 16 multiples of 16. So I'm just choosing a bad size of 16. Epochs is again hyperparameter where I'm choosing it as 7. This is a training path and this is a test path. You also have metadata which is given to you. 
and all of this you uh, just find out the parts and then you know metadata you convert it into a data frame and what are the different classes here so data augmentations again if you take that are around 3500 images and many of the categories it's an imbalanced data set and so many of the categories has got lesser images, so you can do data augmentation so that you don't end up overfitting your model. So to prevent overfitting your model and to also handle this uh, problem of imbalanced data, you can have uh, data augmentations. So the, uh, for, this is just a dummy data augmentation. You can perform certain uh, uh, augmentations which is most closely related to the use case and stuff, which works well for the use case. Here they have performed the flips, rotations, and you they have also done pixel level transforms. But there is various uh, image augmentations which can be done. So you can check out many packages like implementations and things like that. Here they are taking that uh, paths and they're creating a data generator object. So data generator is again an outdated concept in TensorFlow pipelines. Now people don't use data generator. They use um, uh, tm.data. They don't use data generator. So um, you sh this is just an outdated concept, but you can also still it's backward compatible to an extent, so you can use data generator also. But read about tm.data and see how to build TensorFlow by input data pipelines in TensorFlow 2. And uh, so this is they're creating a TensorFlow or uh, data generated object, data generated object. And you can also visualize the images and you can see you can take other EDA notebooks from the same competitions and you can just visualize few of the images and you can see how a disease plant looks like and how an LD plant looks like. There are a lot of misclassifications as well. So there's a lot of uh, noise out there in the data set where there are a lot of images which is of one category is classified, misclassified as another category and all that. And uh, to build a model, you can just do a pip install. It's available as a preloaded model in Keras. So you can just do pip install uh, VIT Keras, and then you can do an import statement from VIT Keras import VIT. So all this, you this is a two lines which you need to do. That's it to use VIT in Keras. You can choose which model you want. And using a base 32 model, but there are different variants of VIT. You can choose any other variant as well. This is a model which we are using VIT B32, but you can use large or whatever based on the computer source or the problem statement. And uh, so image size, the image size, which is 224 for this use case, the activation function and all that you can give. So basically you're installing the VIT Keras, importing the package, and then the model which you're using is something which you need to decide which model you're using. And the constructor parameters you need to give, that's all. You can visualize uh, some attention maps of this, uh, so any sample test image, that's all optional. And this is the model part, fine tuning. So here you're fine tuning it for a classification task. So I'm going to use a Keras sequential layer where the first layer is this VIT model which I constructed. And uh, I'm going to do fine tuning, which is for a classification task where I'm going to add multi and some multi class classification tasks. So I'm going to add few more layers. What these few more layers which you add is up to you. What kind of layers you want to use and all that whether you want to use dropout and things like that is something that you can decide. There's a flattened layer. And then there's a couple of batch normalization dense layers and the final layer as uh, five nodes for the it's because it's a multi class classification problem where there are five categories and that's all. This is how I build the model. So if you take I took a sequential uh, layer and then the first layer is the VIG model and then the other few more layers I added to it. Then you can uh, uh, combine the model with the optimizer which you want and the metric I need is accuracy and then you can just fit the model and you can save the model or you can directly predict the model as well. So this is basically very easy because BIT is already a preloaded model in Keras. So this is very, very easy. You're just taking a pre-trained model then just fine tuning it for the specific class, specific task which you have, which is just this part. 
that's it. And you're doing a model compile and model predict. Uh, so it's a very easy to use a pre-trained model for any of the classification tasks. Then you can take a different data set at Kaggle and then you get just apply VIG and then using the same steps and then you can check out. So you will get a good answer on that way. So we have come to the end of the session. Like we have seen, we started with uh, seeing what is the advantage of VITs over CNNs and the other existing architectures. And uh, we also covered the basics of transformers. Then we covered the basics of vision transformers. And then finally, we took a data set use case. And then we saw how to take a pre-trained model and then you know fine tune it for a specific task. Uh, so with this, at the end of the session, you have nine more minutes to go. So you can ask questions and then I'll be able to answer the questions. Thank you, Usha. Uh, anyone has questions? Go ahead. OK, uh, I have a question. Uh, earlier you showed this uh, diagram of VIT. Yeah. So there you had the main transformer and then you had a MLP and then a class softmax layer. Yeah. So can you just uh, relate that to the code? Uh, because in the code you added many more layers. So I just wanted a comparison. So uh, in the code, uh, this entire architecture is VIT. So no, I'm only uh, looking at one part of the code where you added uh, softmax, a dense layer, and yeah, so I yeah, just sure. wanted an explanation. So this of that. entire architecture will translate to this VIT, uh, VIT uh, model is this entire architecture. So in here, the final layer, the MLP head is there. To this MLP Sorry, head, I can't see your screen. Your screen is uh, disappeared. Yeah, what? Well, Yeah, so this entire yeah. architecture is VIT. So this VIT is what will come here, VIT models. So this yeah, okay, up to this okay. MLP head, this entire architecture, this MLP, including this MLP head, will sit here. So the one which is coming out of this VIT model may not be in the form of a flattened, but if you want to do, uh, it may not be in the flattened in output. So if you want to do a classification, you first have to flatten it out. After flatten, you can directly put a dense layer. It's not necessary. You should go through this batch normalization, dense, uh, and all this is not necessary. You can directly put a flatten and then you can uh, put a classification head, which is what is this classification head here specifies. You just okay. flatten it and then you put a dense layer. That's enough. But this is just for performance. We will be fine tuning it by adding few batch normalization, adding few uh, dropouts and things like that. This is all is optional based on your use case for performance. You can you know fine tune it. But what this flatten and this dense layer is what represents this classification head here. So up to this is a VIT model and then for classification you need to flatten it out for the specific use case for segmentation. You may have to do different VITs is also uh, transform based architectures are also used in segmentation object detection and all for that you need to perform different operations for classification. You basically flatten it out and have a dense layer of out for representing the number of classes. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. So any other question? We have like six more minutes to go. Has anyone applied VIT for time series data? So let's say financial data or weather data. I don't know. Is, the, is it even relevant for time series? Because time context series, matters. Yeah. Yeah, time series, you have a lot of transformer based architectures which are very good at time series like wave transformers. There are several papers which are very, very good for time series. You can uh, Google it out. There are implementations in TensorFlow and PyTorch. You will have around uh, some 50 to 60 papers, just the transformer based uh, papers. But if your data set should be uh, huge because transformer is a bigger model, so you shouldn't have uh, uh, problems with uh, compute resources and the data set also should be little bigger for you to get some good performance. But uh, transformers are extensively used in time series. Most of the Kaggle competitions, the financial time series and all uh, transformers are in the winning top 10 solutions. It's coming. 
with the different different names are there. It's for vision transformers is for computer vision, but for uh, other things uh, for time series, you have different different names. You can use uh, tab transformers or you can use uh, wave transformers. There are different different names variants out there. OK, what I understand transformers is as a position embedded architecture and uh, uh, with the concept of self attention. Yes. Position embedded concept of self attention, then uh, time series cannot be. The reason uh, why it is very successful in time series is time series. You need to understand the past to an extent, right? Uh, the long range dependencies. So it is time series predominantly RNNs and LSTMs are were used before transformers came into picture. The reason why it is more successful than uh, RNNs and LSTMs is because of the long range dependencies. Transformers can handle long range dependency extremely well compared to RNNs and LSTMs. RNNs and LSTMs are no match when it comes for transformer performance, but the only problem is transformer is a bigger architecture, so it is not it may not perform that great for a very tiny data set and all. For tiny data sets, I think RNN and LSTMs are good, but if it's some intermediate level data set and uh, then it works out really well and the pro there shouldn't be a problem with compute resources because transformer is a bigger architecture, so the compute resource is something which you require as well. So uh, time series, it works really well. I can share some. I'll share some, uh, you know, winning solutions using transformer based variants for uh, time series data from Kaggle. I can take and I can share it with you. Yes, please. Thanks. One more thing I noticed from the code that you shared. Uh, it looks like they have used the model as it is and then, uh, you know, they are built around it. Further layers and batching and all that. So my question is, uh, does it mean that uh, when you say pre-train, does it mean that these matrices, that uh, queries, keys and values, they are already fixed because it's pre-trained and we are not tinkering with that? Is that the understanding? Yeah, yeah we are not interfering with those weights, uh, values of weights for these vectors and matrices. It is all set. And uh, we are not interfering. We are not uh, changing those values. We are just taking that entire architecture with those uh, weights. Uh, it has been pre-trained on ImageNet. So while it was pre-trained on ImageNet, there will be certain values of weights and biases which has been captured for every nodes and every layer. So those values will be just used as it is for this. You are not going to train it from the scratch. Got it, yeah. You're just uh, using those uh, weights values. So as a data scientist, suppose I want I'm doing modeling. I don't need to. Uh, like bother myself how, how many multi heads I should have. It's all already fixed and that should work for my problem. Yeah. Statement. Most of the uh, VIT variants, I think, uh, based on the use case which we are dealing with, they, they themselves have uh, given different VIT variants like 16, 32, uh, bay base and large and all. Most of this, I think, for the use case, one of it might be any uh, use case you take, one of it should be applicable. So we don't have to worry about how many attention heads and all that. But if we are developing a similar kind of custom architecture, for example, there was a WIDS datathon which we launched in every February. So for this year's WIDS datathon, we actually came up with a custom architecture of our own, which means we created our own custom transformer architecture. So when you are building your own architecture, that is the mostly for patents or publishing new research paper. That is the case then you know you have to design everything the entire architecture but unless and until you are not developing your own architecture you just want to solve a business problem then most of the 90 percent of the time if you just want to solve the problem the existing state of the art models itself is more than sufficient you can just uh, take the existing state of the mod uh, model model uh, variants and then you know you can just use that that should be more than enough. We don't have to uh, deal with uh, too much of the parameter changing and things like that. Got it. Yeah. So when you say VIT 32, that 32 refers to the number of multi attention hits. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. OK, OK. Any other questions from others? 
Ramanathan, you want uh, any concluding remarks? Thanks. Uh, uh, sorry, one second. Thanks, Usha. Usha. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, it was helpful. So uh, please share the time series transformers. I'm surprised how yeah. that works. Otherwise, this is very useful, especially yeah. for those who have some background on transformers, BERT like stuff. Yeah. Thanks very much. Sure. Thank you so much, Arvind. Thank, yeah, thanks, Usha. For thanks for meeting. joining our program and uh, sharing uh, your expertise with us. And for yeah. those in the audience, uh, just a recap of what main things that she mentioned. If you are new to transformers, try to understand transformers properly first. And once you do that, understanding VIT should be a breeze. So with that, uh, yeah, I thank Usha and uh, thanks for everyone to, for joining this call. Yeah.